Welcome to the Matthews broadcast on this Tuesday, the 21st of November, Thanksgiving week. Welcome to Ralston Moore, our videographer and uh, our photo maestros in the house. Uh, glad to be here on GEMS TV this evening again. Uh, this is Stan Matthews, as you know. I'm joined by a special co-host this evening, a uh, one Leo Bridgewater. Um, who we'll get to in a moment. Uh, we want to begin this uh, segment of the Matthews broadcast as we do uh, all segments of the Matthews broadcast and that is with gratitude. So we thank all of those who make this broadcast possible, certainly uh, Mr. Roderick Moore, the owner of GEMS TV, um, and Mr. Ralston Moore, our videographer and photographer for each session. I want to wish a speedy, happy, and healthy recovery to the one and only image doctor, Mr. Cornelius Hill, uh, on this evening. I um, want to thank Mr. Vernon Bradbury, captain of the Newark Bike Police, for all that he does to help us and help causes of all types, especially the youth. I want to say thank you to Al Tariq White of Leaders for Life for the same reason. I want to say thank you to Vernon Maynard, the principal of the Patterson Leadership Academy, which is a charter school dedicated just for young men in the Patterson community. I could go on forever with all of those who make this broadcast possible, who make our communities a better place to live in, who give our youth and our seniors hope, and who just bring light to the world all over. You are in the alignment, divine alignment, the divine empowerment, the divine upliftment, and the divine enrichment broadcast. Those are the four principles on which this broadcast stands. Uh, we endeavor to connect urban communities and urban consumers with urban service providers, professionals, entrepreneurs, and performing artists. The reason that we do that, it just makes sense, and it is good for our businesses, and it's good for our bottom lines. Urban consumers in the state of New Jersey uh, spent last year close to $142 billion. Uh, that is a huge number. In fact, it's 40% of overall consumption in the state of New Jersey. What is challenging about hearing about that number uh, is that urban consumers in the state of New Jersey spend less than 2% of those whopping numbers with themselves and with entrepreneurs who are in their own communities. So one of the uh, primary purposes of the Matthews Broadcast, Leo, is for us to close that gap um, so that uh, we can enjoy um, that consumption of $142 billion with each other. Uh, think about what our communities would look like. Think about the quality of the schools. Think about the wealth that would be developed generationally. Mm -hmm. uh, think about uh, 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 the, the infrastructure and how that could be improved. Think about the hospitals that have closed in urban communities reopening. Think about even the support that we could provide to the churches and the faith-based institutions, the nonprofits uh, that make our community better. $142 billion goes a long way. Think about New Jersey's only African-American-owned bank, City National Bank. If we could capture 10% of $142 billion and put $14.2 billion in City National Bank, we would not probably not have to go begging to the mainstream banks for the loans for our businesses, the loans for our homes, the loans for our automobiles, and certainly the loans to expand our churches, improve our churches, and to build new ones. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, is something that we certainly can do for ourselves. That's the economic possibility uh, that uh, is before us. So our special guest this evening is here with us to talk about a shift in paradigm, a shift in thinking, a shift in behaving. Uh, he is among a group of elite, committed, strong activists um, that and leaders who are operating in the cannabis space. Yes, I said the cannabis space. <laughs> cannabis, uh, as most of you know, is called marijuana by another name. Uh, it is a naturally growing herb uh, that is on this earth, has always been on this earth, 
and as such, in my opinion, is a gift from our Creator. This is not some unnatural substance mm -hmm. that was self-created by itself. Uh, being a person of Caribbean birth, uh, this herb has been used by people in my family and around the Caribbean for a very long time. Uh, this, this herb has awesome medicinal benefits mm -hmm. in terms of pain relief, in terms of cancer fighting properties, in terms of mental clarity, in terms of glaucoma fighting properties, even in terms of uh, our uh, brain function, mm -hmm. uh, even in terms of our heart regulation. Mm -hmm. um, research is revealing more and more of the medicinal benefits of cannabis. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a wonder plant. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say drug, it's not a drug, this is a wonder plant. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's all natural. Um, the governor-elect for the state of New Jersey has really turbocharged this conversation by saying that New Jersey is going to go recreational so that it can also add on to medical marijuana provision right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it will go recreational as well and the Senate President uh, Mr. Sweeney has also said New Jersey is going forward. The legislation is drafted. Uh, my guest this evening uh, had a lot to do with demanding social justice and equity in the legislation that's going to come out of New Jersey. His name is Leo Bridgewater and we're going to be having a conversation for the next 40 minutes or so. Uh, so call in at 973-910-3331. 973-910-3331. Uh, join us at gemstv.net. That's www gemstv.net and go to the Matthews Broadcast Facebook page uh, where you can join the conversation. On the Facebook page, uh, what do you require from legalizing cannabis? What kind of opportunities do you see and do you have a business idea in the cannabis space that you either need a business plan for, you need capital for, or you want to be part of a uh, uh, a collective thinking process, what we call a mastermind mm -hmm. uh, that already exists with Brother Leo. So I am going to uh, bring him in now uh, here in the Matthews broadcast. Brother Leo Bridgewater, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. We are glad to have you. Um, and what is the name of your organization um, uh, in this space? Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Leo Bridgewater. And I am the co-founder of the New Jersey Cannabis Commission, and I am also the New Jersey Chapter President for Minorities for Medical Marijuana. So I'm wearing a number of hats in this space. Mm -hmm. I'm also one of the uh, three veterans who testified in Senate Committee to have post-traumatic stress disorder uh, added as a qualifying condition for the New Jersey Medical Marijuana Program. And so having uh, gone through uh, the experience of trying to push through uh, PTSD as a qualifying condition, I was able to see the uh, evolution of the state moving towards the adult use side of things. And you also have a private side in terms of your business. Yes, the, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> in coming from an advocacy standpoint, um, making that natural evolution into the business side of things, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it was viewed more of a responsibility than anything else because of the history of the industry and the other 29 states who've also uh, legalized, and whether it be for medical or, or, or uh, adult use, only because, you know, you have... Um, the industry historically hasn't been kind mm -hmm. to communities of color. You know, uh, we are the most underrepresented demographic uh, in the black and brown people and women. Well, and, and, and our communities have um, 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 suffered the punitive effects that of, is true. of this relationship because from a social justice perspective, our communities have been uh, more adversely impacted uh, by um, unfair sentencing. Even though there's equal for possession, use. Even though there's equal use. Mm -hmm. um, and um, um, now we have to have legislation that will undo much of the damage 
uh, that's occurred. So let me start there mm -hmm. um, from the legislative perspective. Um, how is the legislation that will be merged in New Jersey, uh, how is that going to ensure equity and parity and fairness and social justice for communities of color? Um, well, the, the current bill is S3195. Um, and S3195 does not do any of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it makes reference in terms of uh, minorities, but uh, nothing of significance that would lead me to feel as though we will have that equity state that we were talking about. Um, it needs a lot more teeth. Right. And so um, it is, and it's paramount that we recognize exactly where we are in, in, in this situation because uh, if things go the way we hope for them to go, New Jersey will be the first state to ever legislatively uh, legalize cannabis. Mm -hmm. And that's a significant deal um, just because, uh, number one, it's never happened before. And number two, because it's never happened before, we've never really been at the table, you know, historically. Mm -hmm. And so if whatever the final bill would look like... Um, if it doesn't have the kind of teeth mm -hmm. that would at least satisfy me mm -hmm. for people of color, um, then it would be our fault because we weren't engaged, mm -hmm. which is, you know, what has been um, my experience um, when it comes to POC communities. We are not as engaged as we should be because uh, recognize anyone within the range of our voices, whether it be uh, in person or listening. Um, we were you hearing this. You will be the only one to experience the end of prohibition on cannabis in New Jersey. Right, right. Which is which is a very significant thing. I want us to be at the forefront of developing the industry, developing the legislation, and then benefiting uh, from it as well. Textbook example of uh, a once in a lifetime opportunity. Absolutely, it, it is. <laughs> well, look at prohibition in the early 1930s. The end of mm -hmm. prohibition created huge fortunes uh, for communities all over uh, this country. We see the commercials every day. Budweiser, we've been brewing beer for a hundred years. Low and brown. That's right. That's all right. of those, well, right. what, what, what those people did mm -hmm. to start those companies a hundred years ago, mm -hmm. that's this now. <laughs> but that's just, right. It's cannabis. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. I, I, think, I think we know that huge fortunes are going to be made. Mm -hmm. Generational wealth. Generational you know, so wealth. this is, we're talking about a shift here. Right. It's funny you said some things. You said, think about this, think mm -hmm. about that. Um, you know, I would add, think about January 18th. Because that's when we'll find out just how bad it really is. You know, uh, Governor-elect Murphy will, will will now be wearing, the, he'll be in that chair. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what Governor Christie is going to be turning over. I can only imagine. Mm -hmm. I mean... If it's indicative of how New Jersey transit runs, <laughs> we in trouble. <laughs> well, we've, we've, had, we, we've had a long-running, people of color that have long-running issues at New Jersey transit from uh, sharing in the contract dollars, mm -hmm. uh, being under, uh, underrepresented mm -hmm. in management, being rep underrepresented in mm -hmm. the entire uh, population of those employees in that public-private agency. So uh, we are going to hold uh, Governor-elect Murphy accountable mm -hmm. Uh, for making sure that that governing body, that board of trustees uh, for New Jersey Transit looks like the state of New Jersey. We know that mm -hmm. four out of six residents in the state of New Jersey is a person of color. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on that nine-member board, we need to have at least three mm -hmm. seats uh, that we control. And I think that's going to happen from some conversations that I've been privy to. Our leadership is demanding at the New Jersey Turnpike Authority, at the Port Authority, and at New Jersey Transit parity on those boards. Uh, but let me ask you, uh, Leo, in terms of uh, the um, evolution of the marketplace here in the state of New Jersey, right now, how many dispensaries that do we have for medical marijuana? Um, there are currently six total dispensaries mm -hmm. in the state, and five are currently operating. Uh, the sixth one uh, will be looking to come online within the next couple of months. What do, if you are a person suffering from PTSD? Mm -hmm. uh, I know our veterans uh, um, have had uh, plenty of that. If you're a person, obviously the glaucoma or other medical ailments, mm -hmm. and you need to get a medical marijuana permit or license, I think it is, mm -hmm. or card, 
What do you have to do in the state of New Jersey to uh, get one of those? Um, you you would first look up uh, any of the uh, licensed physicians who recommend mm -hmm. uh, 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 people for uh, the New Jersey Medical Marijuana Program, and then you go see them. And then um, after you see them, they uh, once they make the recommendation, you pay a fee. The state contacts you via email. You pay another fee. And then however many days later, you get your card. You're, they actually take your picture there at the place. So, um, And then once everything is, you get your card, you can go to any of the uh, dispensaries and register with that dispensary. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the state will also tell you uh, exactly how much uh, cannabis you're allotted every every month. Like I'm allotted two, two and a half ounces a month. Mm -hmm. You know, now I don't actually use two and a half ounces a month, but... You know, it, 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 it I, you know, but there are times where it does come, you know, close to that, depending on whatever element that it actually, uh, you know, I'm uh, trying to address. Mm -hmm. As a con as a consumer, um, it's not about um, how high can I get; it's what high can I get, and that is why the education level of the general public is so paramount and why it's needed so bad, mm -hmm. because. You know, people don't know. You know, you, you talk to folks and especially, you know, our regular folks and they can, you know, tell you, oh, I like that that, that mid, I like that Reggie, that loud, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's it. And it's like, uh, no, no, no um, you know, no, like like to know is this a sativa or indica? You know, I don't know if it's that loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, if you say, well, I'm a medical marijuana patient, and they say, oh, well, you like that exotic. <laughs> 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 so that tells you, you know, like how much, to what degree we have work to do um, and, and why, you know, my experience largely has been, you know, um, POC communities are, you know, not engaged, you know, and we can be left behind, you know. Mm -hmm. Like we did with the real estate market, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, they made lines. Uh, like we did with the dot com market, we missed out on that because ain't nobody have a computer. <laughs> you know, uh, we missed out on, and, and we keep missing out on. Well, not missing out, but giving our money away with the hair market. You know, right. it, it, you know, we we're not where we should be, even though we're we ha we're we have so much money. You know, we sp you know we spend like trillions of dollars a year. You know, and mm -hmm. we need to learn to redirect our resources. You know, like um, the best way to honor you know Black Wall Street is to recreate Black yeah. Wall Street. That's right. And I think this uh, can the cannabis space, particularly here in New Jersey, is a way in which it can be done, creating symbiotic relationships with entrepreneurs and and small business owners who look like us and create an entire ecosystem. And so when you talk about the cannabis mm -hmm. space, mm -hmm. you know, um, instead of Colorado or California being the first thing you say, you think of, you know, New Jersey. I mean, hey, we are the garden state. It is our birthright, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So these are things that, and also that education requires that POC communities uh, truly think on a macro level mm -hmm. which is what is required when you're in the position that we are now in in time mm -hmm. we're ahead of the law but it's not for mm -hmm. long mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now if you um can share with us what uh areas of the marketplace do you think represent some of the opportunities i know uh testing labs oh. edibles oh um Pain medicines. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, so New Jersey is projected to be a $1.6 to $2.2 billion a year industry. That's wow. by 2020. Wow. Okay. Um, we start off number two behind California right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but the thing is, is that, you know, um, the, the, the subject of cannabis was taboo. Mm-hmm. A year ago, for a lot of people whom we're asking to make the rules, you know, so they still use the old words, gateway drug, <laughs> and to the trained ear and to the, you know, to the casual, to the regular consumer, mm -hmm. you know, we know that that term was scientifically debunked years ago. So mm -hmm. we always go, ooh, what year are you? <laughs> you know, I recently went, attended uh, my first league of municipalities right here in mm -hmm. uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey. 
And I heard that so many times from a lot of uh, uh, elected officials. And I had to tell one guy, just like, oh, so you want to be the footloose town? <laughs> the ones that, you know, no dancing in your town? You know, <laughs> well, you remember what happened at the end of the movie. The kids had the most fun, and they was right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> But okay, it, the bill also uh, required uh, calls for an opt-in and opt-out clause too. Wow. So if you're not careful, you know your elected officials could actually opt your municipality out of this, which means you would also lose your municipality would not be able to partake in any other revenue that cannabis brings in. Okay, okay. Uh, what do you think um, the um, organizations that you belong to? Uh, how are you making people aware um, of the um, opportunities and the legislation? Well, the New Jersey Cannabis Commission was uh, actually founded by uh, five people, uh, myself, uh, Ronnie Soto, uh, Tiana Long, Shalice Rogers, and Kim Burns. Um, the five of us are advocates in our own right, and it was just one of those things where we were going to so many of the same community events in and around New York mm -hmm. and we kept seeing each other mm -hmm. over and over again and it was like okay what are we doing <laughs> we might as well just you know how you keep seeing the same people at the same parties mm -hmm. sort of kind of like that but these were very real issues that we were advocating for and mm -hmm. so we decided to you know put our heads together and you know we just recently filed our 501c3 paperwork mm -hmm. um, now uh, at the same time, I was already uh, chapter president for mm -hmm. New Jersey with minorities for medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. And I view that as a very uh, great, good strategic partnership, um, only because on a national level, you know, minorities for medical marijuana and our, our national president, Roz McCarthy, you know, she is doing some phenomenal things. Absolutely. I mean, she's all, you know, uh, I. And a perfect textbook example of Shiro, mm -hmm. you know. Um, there's also, uh, you know, um, Dashita Dawson mm -hmm. of Mary Jane Marketing. She is, you know, uh, another. She's like uh, Roz McCarthy times five, <laughs> you know. And 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 you know, um, to be able to strategically partner with these people to bring forth the message. Because they, you know, see things. Roz was instrumental in the legislation in Florida for medical marijuana. Right, right. And she also has demonstrated mm -hmm. an ability to create generational revenue. Uh, because of Roz, every uh, medical marijuana card issued in the state of Florida, Florida A&M gets $9 forever. Yeah, she was sharing at the conference that you held this weekend um, mm -hmm. that um, we attended, fortunately, and... Uh, Roz, I know if you're out there, you can call in, sis, at 973-910-3331. Also, Dr. Craig Levant. Craig, uh, call us back here on the live line at 973-910-3331. 973-910-3331. Uh, he is the owner of uh, Flower Power Coffee, oh. a New York-based company and one of the friends of uh, Leo Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell us about uh, uh, what your own plans uh, post legislation, what, what, what should we expect Leo Bridgewater to be doing? Well, um, aside from my work with uh, New Jersey Cannabis Commission and um, Minorities for Medical Marijuana, um, I want to you know, get into the consultant world you know, with uh, being a, a vessel by which the industry works through. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and 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 putting into very real practice all the things that we fought for. Like it would it be insane to have, you know, advocated for something and talk with you know our our leaders and trying to get laws done and you know updating of zoning and all this other stuff and then you know and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My wife would kill me. <laughs> And so, you know, um, you know, I have a, a digital real estate company, mm -hmm. you know, where we own, own a, a massive amount of um, digital real estate domain names, you know, in anticipation of, you know, um, you know, the industry coming up. So, you know, anybody who wants 420cafe.com, come see me. <laughs> For NYC, all that stuff, you know, and, these are things, domain and names. Continue, and we have a call-in coming in. I think it's 
uh, one of our colleagues. You're live on the uh, Matthews broadcast. Who, am I, who is uh, calling in? Hey, good evening, Doc. Hey. Uh, how are you doing over there in uh, the Big Apple? We're doing we're doing well. Uh, the only thing that could make it better is it's if the coffee is we had two cups of coffee over here. <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. So, so Dr. Craig, what is uh, the name of your business? And how long has Flower Power existed? Flower Power in this state has existed since, um, I want to say, May of this year. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, we brought a couple of unique individuals together to really um, bring, a, bring a product to market that we thought everyone could really enjoy and, and utilize. So what are the... Um, Key benefits. What is, what is the unique value of Flower Power Coffee? Well, Flower Power Coffee itself is a CBD infused mm -hmm. coffee, and um, with the combination of the cannabidiol CBD and the caffeine in the coffee, you're able to get a um, a nice focused energy without the jitters. And it's also been you know it's been proven or shown at least to help with anxiety, jitters. And just the, the trials and tribulations of daily life. So it's a it's really unique product. Who is, uh, Dr. Craig, who is a great candidate uh, for Flower power, power Coffee? Who would it benefit most um, that uh, in our viewing audience um, mm -hmm. we might want to refer to you? Who's your best customer? Well, our best customer is anyone who's dealing with everyday life. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's true. You know, it really is. It's every day there is something that you know might not work well with you, or something in society, or in general some stressors, or some pains. Even it, 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 it can help with you know uh, the muscle aches and pains that go along with just growing and living. Um, anyone really who consumes coffee. Or we also make edibles if you don't consume mm -hmm. the coffee to get that, that CBD into your system. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a great product that we as humans ha have been shown to have our underlying system in our body that utilizes uh, the cannabis plant. So it's a re really unique product, mm -hmm. uh, not Naturally. the product itself, just the, the CBD and the way we were able to bring it to the public. Um, so it's just, it, it's really unique in the way that people can consume this and, and feel the relief and some anxiety and some of the, the, the aches and pains will go away within, you know, 15 minutes. So it's really designed for almost everyone. Um, I wouldn't say it, it's specifically designed for someone, it, it's for any human. We have this, uh, this underlying system called the endocannabinoid system that is we're trying a whole entire body. It's, it's more intrusive than the nervous system. And we, we're, we're trying to, to reactivate the people and um, help them deal with, with everything that's going on in their life, from pain to anxiety, just to make them feel better. Mm. Dr. Craig, let me ask you a question without getting overly technical. Uh, what does CDB stand for? What exactly are those letters uh, uh, for the layman? Mm -hmm. The CBD, it stands for a big word, cannabidiol. It's the non-psychoactive chemical in cannabis. So when people think of cannabis, you know, you, you, you know they think of smoking some marijuana or, mm -hmm. you know, some pot, as some people call it. Um, but there are chemicals in there that get you hot, and this doesn't have that. It's, it's extracted chemicals from there that you will not fail a drug test. You will um, you will not get high. You will not um, 
you know, become a, some people look at people who, who consume cannabis as have a non-productive part of society where that's not going to happen. Even when, you know, when you look at cannabis smokers, they're very, but this is a way for people, for, let's say, even cannabis naive, to consume the product of a plant that's only going to help them. It has anti-anxiety properties, antioxidants, um, it's neuroprotective. So the CBD itself is the non-psychological <coughs> that's extracted from the cannabis plant. Now the um, now the, the the property that has that psych uh, that 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 uh, psychological effect is the THC. Am I correct? You are correct. So that that's where you would get the high from. And, it, and CBD actually modulates that. It's kind of like a locking key method, as you can think about it. When you put a key into a lock, it fits in nice and tight. And that's the THC going into the lock. Where the CBD, the cannabidiol. It actually modulates that lock so that key doesn't fit in as, as tightly and it's able to be broken off and go throughout your body and you're able to get actually more of the medical benefits from the THC component, part that gets you high from using CBD, part that doesn't get you high. They work like a synergistically, they work together to actually help you know, your body and your mind uh, cope and deal with with everyday life or, or uh, disease states that might arise, but by itself, it's, it's not going to get you high. There is no, there is no euphoric feeling you might feel. You might, you will, like, you, you might get a sensation of a tingle throughout the body, but mm -hmm. that's, that's I mean, a high feeling. That's the, that's the, the, cannab the CBD, the cannabidiol, working with your body all throughout, because it's, it's, it's very extensive. It's, it, when you think of um, CBD and the endocannabinoid system, the, the, the easiest way for a person to think about it is like when you go to the doctor's office, you see this acupuncture yes. chart, you see these acupuncture points, and they go further and deeper than the nervous system. Mm -hmm. And then you look at it and you're like, wow. And then when you, when you think about it, that's actually your endocannabinoid system going throughout your body. It, it, it's in every part almost every cell of our body. Now, given that this is such a vast system uh, that is a part of uh, every human being's system, um, can people access uh, information about the cannabinoid system um, on Google or any one of the uh, search engine platforms so that they can you become can, better informed? access it directly through a search engine, but what we did was at ourpower.com, that's the website you can go to, we've in a lot of these, three, these three, resources, three, one. and you can access it directly from our website at flowerpower.com and learn about it, and learn about the, the every day there are new studies coming out from all over the world, and they're on our website, they'll have links to and it's just a great thing to learn that not only humans, but every animal on this planet with a backbone has this endocannabinoid system. We've evolved with this unique and wonderful system throughout our body, and it's there to actually protect us, to regulate us, to help, to help restore and and cope with life. So it's it's. Flowerpower.coffee, you can get all the information that someone can want to access directly from our website without going and searching all around. You'll be able to go to the website and find quality links um, from some of the most respected people in the world and in this industry. Now, no, Doc, let me, no. now Doc, let me ask you a question because, because we're making a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. uh, those who have a vested interest in maintaining the ignorance of the present um, would certainly want to say this Dr. Craig is just um, a quack. Um, uh, those um, ignorant people on the spiritual side of the fence would say, you know, he's speaking against our faith and all the rest that comes along. Uh, in terms of credentials, uh, Dr. Craig Levant, tell me what your educational background is. Well, uh, I, have, I have a degree in botany and a doctor in pharmacology. I've been in the clinical, the clinical field for the last 20 plus years dealing with 
vast disease space and, and a lot of different people and different cultures. So, so you, so, so you obviously are a pharmacist. Do you run a pharmacy presently? Yes, I actually am the supervising pharmacist of a very large pharmacy in New York. So, um, so uh, thank you for providing your credentials. I um, want to ask you this question. Uh, we see a large number of people coming back from Iraq, uh, some coming back from Afghanistan. Many of them have suffered... Um, uh, head injuries and various wounds. Um, the difference between these wars and the Vietnam War is that our uh, ability to treat the wounded in the field have saved many people's lives. So while they didn't die on the battlefields in Iraq and they didn't die in the battlefields of uh, Syria and they didn't die in the battlefields of Afghanistan, they are coming home as the walking wounded uh, have you worked with that population in terms of your knowledge of the benefits, the medicinal benefits of cannabis? Yes, and actually we're actually working hand in hand with a lot of that. We actually have two um, veterans working for us. We're, we're we actually pride in that because the veteran population is a very, very overlooked population. They've given their lives and their, their hearts and souls for us going overseas. And they lose part of their soul and part of their heart when they come back because it's taken from them from all of these, these you know, sometimes horrific events that are going on that, that Tell them they, call back they, some minutes. might be pausing or some might be trying to protect against <coughs> fighting these wars. And then they come back and, they are, and some of them are soulless and, and they need help and they need more than the um, pharmacological thank you, Doc, for sharing your uh, medical expertise. We thank you for uh, sharing your heart and your passion for being a blessing to others here on the Matthews Broadcast uh, this evening. Uh, we look forward to having you back and one day having you here in person. Uh, we enjoyed you at the conference that was just held in uh, Trenton. We ask everyone uh, to support Flower Power Coffee at uh, flowerpowercoffee.net. Okay, flowerpower.com or flowerpower.coffee. And ask for Dr. Craig Levant. Doc, how can they call you? Uh, they can reach us directly at flowerpower.coffee or um, they can email me directly at craig at flowerpower.coffee. Okay, have a great uh, night over there in... Uh, yes, I also just want to sure. thank you guys for doing what you're doing and getting the message out there, especially in the minority communities. That's always where I work and try to work, just because I really like mm. giving back. Mm. And uh, I also want to give a, a, a special discount to all of your viewers out there. Uh, it's going to be Matt 
15 off. And you'll be able to get 50% off on all of our products on the website. That is very generous of you, and we thank you so much on behalf of the Matthews Broadcast audience. Uh, and so we look forward to connecting with you again soon, uh, Doc. And um, uh, we're going to move right along here. So we will talk to you soon, Doc. Thanks for calling. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Have a wonderful night, gentlemen. Okay, Doc. Craig. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. We don't have anybody on hold. All right, back in the broadcast here with uh, uh, Leo. Uh, Leo, uh, that's one of your good friends. Uh, we're mm -hmm. expecting a few others to call in before uh, we sign off this evening. Um, the, the next area that I want to get into in the time that we have left, um, uh, what are the requirements going to be for you to operate a mm -hmm. business in the cannabis space? Um, I know background checks. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have a prior criminal record? Those sorts of things are going to come up. Mm -hmm. So tell us, if you want to be an entrepreneur in this $1.6 billion industry, what are some of the things that you're going to have to consider in order for you to participate in this market? And while you're thinking about the answer, uh, join us here in the Matthews broadcast this evening uh, with uh, Mr. Leo. Uh, he is coming from the New Jersey Cannabis uh, Commission. Commission. Yep. Uh, just had very important business in the city of Newark today. I hope you met with our great Mayor Ras Baraka. Uh, so join us here at the Matthews Broadcast at www.gemstv.net and the Matthews Broadcast Facebook page. I want to say hello to all of our friends in Trenton, Mr. Bernard Borges, Ms. Sam Samut Scott, uh, also Mr. Uh, uh, Tracy Seifert, <laughs> who was the speaker at, oh, the, uh, uh, at the Cannabis Coalition Conference this weekend, on and on and on. Uh, so all of you who've tuned in this evening, we just want to welcome you in. Uh, keep your eyes on this prize to make sure that the legislation is right mm -hmm. and that the opportunities are available to our community. So with that said, uh, Brother Leo, what are some of the considerations if you want to participate in this marketplace? Well, let's, let me preference everything with uh, recognizing that um, as of right now there is no law mm -hmm. so everything uh, from this point on is pr purely speculative mm -hmm. but if you go with what's on the uh, with what's on the um, the we've got a call yeah, coming in. go ahead go ahead and finish your um. welcome to the Matthews broadcast who may I ask to speak it? Ronnie Soto. Oh, oh hey, Ron Soto. Oh. This is one of the founding members of the coalition. Yeah. This is, so this why is. don't you, look, Ron, Ron? Just want you listening for a minute and let um, and let Leo finish his answer about the considerations that you have to uh, take into account uh, to participate in this marketplace. Actually, he could actually uh, 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 piggyback on the things that I'm about to say, but. Um, historically, looking at other other states, mm -hmm. um, it require you know um, some cases millions of dollars, depending on what license you will be uh, going for. Um, there are uh, five verticals: testing, no, not testing, uh, transportation, security, retail, um, <clears throat> cultivation, and uh, uh, production. Um, no security so um, and each of those verticals will have a different class to each of those verticals um, and so if, uh, if you wanted to have a cannabis uh, vending machine then you, you might need a class three mm -hmm. you know. class three okay. mm -hmm. oh <laughs> yeah sorry about that All right. All right. <laughs> um, and so uh, with that, you know, um, it, it really depends on what it is. But here's the thing. There's a projection of $950 million in ancillary revenue. Now, those are businesses that don't touch the plant at all, that you don't need a license for, that you could get right now. And so until there's legislation, uh, Ronnie and myself, we t when we talk to everyone, we talk to them like they're owners. You know, again, f facilitating a cultural shift and trying to be the vessel 
by which the industry works through. Ronnie Soto, what would you add to uh, the requirements that uh, Leo has just uh, shared? Uh, yeah, Leo definitely just said it again. Uh, yeah, definitely what would you what would you add in terms of the requirements to participate in the business in a cannabis based business once the legislation is fi finalized? What do you need well, to I mean, operate in this space? Leo, Leo definitely covered you know, most of the major points. Mm. I mean, definitely um, background checks, having enough assets mm -hmm. to actually operate. Um, so the barrier to entry is you know, I don't want anyone to be fooled, and we don't want anyone to be fooled. At this point, it's going to be pretty high. Um, we're anticipating that they're going to implement some programming that gives access to minorities um, because we've seen in other states, the other, the other eight states, the minority population is very underrepresented. However, when it comes to being arrested for possessing marijuana or cannabis rather, um, we're overrepresented. So there's a shift, a cultural shift that has to take place and you know, that's, that's part of the reason why we we formulated the New Jersey Cannabis Commission to mm -hmm. make sure that there's a voice and that we have a seat at the table. Um, but Leo definitely raised some, some big points when it comes to the ancillary businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, we, we, we need to do it, but let's mention Colorado. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you look at Colorado, Colorado, um, they only went legal in 2014. Um, and in that three year period, um, I believe in 2015 alone, just the following year, they generated one billion dollars touching the plan. However, for ancillary business that do not even touch the plan, they made 1.5 billion dollars. So there's a, an opportunity to still make uh, to generate revenue off the cannabis industry without touching anything. Mm -hmm. um, me and Leo talk about this all the time. One of the biggest benefactors of uh, cannabis in <laughs> uh, Colorado has been uh, Papa John. Um, they've, they've made a substantial amount of money because the cannabis industry is there mm -hmm. and it's feeding all these other industries. So um, if you can't necessarily get in because there's an issue with capital, you can use your same skill set that you have now mm -hmm. and transition into the cannabis space and, you know, just think of it as another, you know, another plug, you know, plug into your business that you're, that you're servicing. Hey, Ronnie, uh, have you guys thought about setting up an equity fund yes. uh, and a crowdfunding campaign that would raise dollars for, for entrepreneurs who may not be able to finance uh, the um, business that they want to have in the cannabis space? We are, we, we, we are considering it. We've actually been offered opportunities to be part of a few private equity funds. Um, we're still in the process of yeah, that's, that's definitely on the table, especially, you know, we, we have a challenge with funding because this is still considered federally illegal, although the state will authorize us to, to have this program in place. And that doesn't allow us to, I mean, we, you cannot go to the Small Business Administration and try to get a grant or a loan um, because it's federally illegal. So mm -hmm. um, what we're doing, um, I mean, we have about 18 to 24 months before this is live. What we're doing now with our organization is pulling together key individuals who at some point can decide whether they want to uh, join forces and start a private equity fund, mm -hmm. because I think that's gonna be key. And uh, private equity has been, uh, it's, it's been a hot topic over the last year or so because a lot of big players are moving into the space with funding because they're starting to be okay with the fact that this is gonna be a huge opportunity. So, mm -hmm. so definitely we need to crowd whether it's crowdfunding or starting a private equity of some of some sort, it's something that's going to be required as we want access. Because I just went to the MJ Biz Conference in Las Vegas, and uh, it was a great conference. Our industry is growing. However, that was a clear indication that we are not being included in the industry. So we need to uh, we need to join forces and, and source funds in order to really get involved and get a piece of this class. Well, I'm glad that uh, you called in, Ronnie. We're going to be in communication with you and your other co colleagues as we make sure that uh, communities of color have parity in this $1.6 billion cannabis industry as it, as it emerges 18 to 24 months. Will you come back and share with us uh, other information so that our community can be informed? Con consider myself, Leo, the New Jersey Cannabis Commission, 
you know, your number one resource when it comes to educating mm -hmm. the community, educating communities of color, um, and educating the business community overall. So absolutely, we'd love to be a resource for you, the community, um, and New Jersey overall. So thank you for the platform and look forward to seeing how this rolls out. Wonderful. We'll talk to you again, Ronnie. And uh, uh, Leo, so we're coming to the end of our segment mm. um, and just want you to uh, share any final thoughts that you may have and contact information uh, for the New Jersey Cannabis Commission. Oh, well, you can definitely find me, uh, Leo Bridgewater, uh, on Facebook, uh, Leo Bridgewater on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, and Leo Bridgewater on Twitter. <laughs> That's right. Um, but uh, you can also uh, go to the uh, New Jersey Cannabis Commission dot com and um, you know uh, definitely um, take a long look, uh, particularly for those uh, who are not here in the state of New Jersey. Take a long look at uh, www.minoritiesformedicalmarijuana.org. dot org. Um, that is the uh, national program uh, uh, organization that I am chapter president of here in New Jersey. Um, and look at because all for all this talk of cannabis, um, you know, um, minorities for medical marijuana are really taking a, a hard charge with the hemp industry. Mm -hmm. uh, cannabis is going to be big money; it's going to be great. But hemp is the long money, That's right. and you it's know, textile this textile exactly, uh, yeah. And yeah. so, um, which again highlights the brilliance of uh, women like Roz McCarthy and. Dashita Dawson, uh, the value and the information that Ronnie just gave you, that information is 96 hours old. Wow. Yeah, so when we had the uh, event in, on Saturday in Trenton, I uh, recognized that, yeah, there were two members, of, there were two founding members of the New Jersey Cannabis Commission, and the other uh, four were in uh, Vegas and, and uh, all over the country. Keeping us abreast. We're working, yeah. Like we're 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 working. We have Art Four Twenty going on in Miami, uh, December 9th. Well, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna stay connected, Leo Bridgewater. Thank you for all those that called in this evening. Uh, thank you so much for sharing with the Matthews broadcast, being here. Join us again next week uh, on the Matthews broadcast. Have a safe and a happy holiday this Thanksgiving. This is Stan Matthews and Leo Bridgewater saying good night and God bless.